Welcome to the Rudin Report Podcast. I'm Dave Rudin. We got a good show for you this week. We're we're not going to be football only. Uh, I called it the Rudin Report Podcast because I wanted to bounce around a little bit and try to get to some other sports. And uh, the best performance I saw by far by a team this week was the St. Joseph girls soccer team's 4 nothing win over Fairfield Ludlow. <laughs> and joining me in a bit will be the captain of the team, Maeve Matthews, and uh, Alexa Pino, the Gatorade State Player of the Year. But we are going to start with, uh, as we always do, football. And, and back is my sidekick, Sean Ireland. Sean, we uh, don't have a lot to talk about this week. No, it, yeah. Gonna... At our little pre-discussion, we said it was it was kind of a boring week this week. It was. I mean, this this was a week where, <laughs> excuse me, you had a uh, a lot of a lot of favorites playing playing teams that were just outmanned. We, you know, we had a number of blowouts. A, a number of uh, if if you were in Fairfield, you got rain shortened games. You, but. Uh, oh. Not, not, not a lot to to talk about, and we'll start about uh, we'll start at the the closest game in in a second. But it, it's kind of interesting, uh, and I didn't even look this up. You did right before the show, but you know we were talked about whether the FCAC is is down this year, and and talking to people, it, it's like the FCAC's down, but but the state's down too. It's not just the FCAC, mm-hmm. and 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 you did some research there in terms of. Uh, FCAC teams with yeah. regard to the state playoffs. Yeah, if the season ended right now, seven of our teams would be would qualify for the state playoffs. Um, Ludlow just out. Ludlow's actually tied for eighth, but they lose on a lot or whatever that's called. So, yeah, Dave, we, we talked about this a week or so ago. You know, when people say the FCAC's down, like, how are you saying yet? You, you guys are saying that after one week. Not you guys, you per, you know, people were saying after one week, but no, we're not down. We're, we're all right. I just think that the top of the league is not as strong as the top of the league has been. It's not bad. It's just not as strong as it's been. And, and, and to be fair, it's been at such a high level. It would be pretty difficult to me ma- to maintain that. Yeah. But, and, and, and kind of segueing off, I, I think one thing that's different is quarterback play this year. There's, there's, you know, quarter, quarterback play is not what what it used to be. Some teams are 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 playing two quarterbacks. Some teams have been dealing with injuries, and and other than uh, a couple of places, you don't really have the dominant quarterbacks that we're accustomed to. Yeah, that is true. That is true. You know, like for the you know the past I don't know ten years, maybe even longer now. New Canaan has always had that kid that's going somewhere big. Darien's always had big. St. Joe's, Greenwich. You know, player of the year, like it, 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 we don't have that one dominant kid that every week you're seeing in the headlines thrown for this and doing other, that. Other than Caleb Smith at Staples. Other than yes, Caleb that's true. Smith. Caleb, I apologize because Dave will tell you, I have you ranked as high as anybody. So I take that. Caleb, I apologize. But um, yeah, but um, it, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Well, one of the schools that's been struggling with quarterbacks, but uh but but is managing to win and and in the game that I figured and was the most competitive of the weekend was yesterday at Stanford. First time I've covered a game at Boyle Stadium in a while that wasn't a New Canaan Darien uh postseason game. Yeah. And St. Joseph came in real hard fought 17-16 win over over Stanford. Uh a game that kind of showed uh, the narrowing of, of the gap between the top of the league and, and the middle of, of the league and a game where uh, it came down. We didn't think it would, but a two point conversion attempt, uh, Donnie Pata Pata with, I think it was about five forty to go, went for two, they failed. Uh, certainly nobody could question uh, the logic there. And, and Stanford got the ball two more times where they could have tried to get in the field goal range and credit to St. Joseph's defense, which, which has been playing at a really high level. They, they held on and, and made stops and, and got the win. And uh, that was a close, it, it wasn't the prettiest game, but, but it was a close game and, and two defenses that played really well. Yeah. Any game at any level, especially in high school, if it's coming down to the fourth quarter to one score game, and then you get the score, and then you roll the dice and go for two that, you know, um, that's exciting. 
that's exciting. You know, uh, now obviously the game would have played out differently, but you know, you could argue that Stanford was a yard short of winning, you know, if they do get to two point conversion, St. Joe's is maybe in a different mindset. So I don't know if the game played out the same way, but you could make the argument that Stanford's one yard away from, you know, having a win against one of the top teams in the league. And um, if I remember correct, last year was also a very, very tight game. 17, between 13 game last year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So Stan Stanford's right there. They got a real tough schedule, but um, you know, that, that was a good game. And it, there's nothing, nothing like a game in Boyle stadium. I'm sorry. No, no, nah, knock I, on any, it, it's, it's the top. I, I always love playing there. It's just the setting, the sounds, the view. It, it's just, it's great for high school football. Yeah, there are certain venues that, that are just uh, special, and, and Boyle's one of them. And, you know, I it, it goes to the fact I never asked Donnie why he went for two because there was no reason to. Uh, they weren't really moving the ball that well. They were struggling on offense. Uh, E.J. Presley, their star quarterback, got hurt. on. They actually put him out a wide receiver on, on a goal. They, they were uh, in, in the red. They were within the five-yard line trying to uh, – trying to score and so they brought ian duggan in who's who's a good quarterback and put ej uh spread him out wide and he didn't wasn't able to come down to play and, and injured himself and, and didn't come back so uh you know ian ian's more of a, a pocket passer ej's just one of the most dynamic players in the league he can mm -hmm. make something out of nothing so uh certainly no no reason you know don Donnie, Donnie made the, there wasn't a wrong call to make there. And, and Donnie, you know, went for it. And to St. Joseph's credit, uh, they made a stop. Yeah. If, you know, the, I shouldn't say the our rule, if, if we were, if we were struggling offensively, we would have went for two there also, you know, we would have been like, Hey guys, this, this is our shot right here to try to take the lead late in the game. You know, now it's different if the score was 48, 45 and you're scoring at will, you know, that's a little different because, you know, you, you think you have the opportunity to probably get the ball back and score again. Um, yeah, I, I agree with Donnie 100 percent going for two uh, that late in the game with the situation that it was. Yeah, it's it's a different St. Joseph team. The uh, the offense is is a work in progress and struggling right now. Uh, they, they had a lot of turnover to begin with. And uh, Connor Fahey was supposed to be their their starting quarterback. The day I went up there preseason, he was uh, he he was sitting out. <clears throat> they thought that uh, it, it was a hamstring injury that they had to wait out, and they found out a week before the season that he actually uh, tore the hamstring off. So, so, uh, so he's out for the year, and they brought in a freshman, Harry Jones, to play quarterback. And you can see he's he's got potential. He's going to mm -hmm. be good. I, I talked to uh, Joe Delavecchia, their coach, before the game. He said they're gonna. He's gonna be really good. But bottom line is, you're throwing a freshman in who wasn't even prepared to start, right? Uh, right off the bat, and and he's doing the best he can. He he had a couple of nice uh, touchdown passes uh, to tie the game and, and then to win the game. So, uh, you know, he's gonna he's gonna make some great throws because he's an athlete, and he's gonna make some mistakes because he's a freshman, and. Uh, but St. Joe's right now is is living with with defense, and uh, their their defense has just played really well because Stanford has game breakers. Yeah, it, uh, you know I believe uh, they had a shutout last week. I think possibly right. In the, yeah, one they, the shutout, yeah. Uh, they they had two shutouts in a row going into this week. Yeah, so, so they're, they're four, fourteen points in two games. They're they're just always Six, very well coached. You know, you're, they're always in the right place. They're always doing the right thing. They're never out of position, you know, and, and if you could do that with athletes and size, you know, um, you're going to be good. You're going to be good. And, you know, St. Joe's is always, always well coached, you know, the whole Stanford to, you know, the points that they were held to, you know, that's credit to them. Um, and back what you were saying with the freshman quarterback. Yeah, he, he's he, he might have a few growing pains. OK, and again, they're going to put him in situations where, you know, hope, uh, hopefully he doesn't need to do too much. But the, the, the always thing that you're always worried about with putting a freshman on varsity is just the strength. 
you know, he's probably 14, 15 tops going up against 17, 18 year olds. There's just a strength difference there. You know, um, I'm sure he can make all the right reads. He can make the throws, but it's just not the same, you know, as somebody who's been there two, three years, I can hit the weight room for three, four years and all that good stuff. But, you know, I'm sure they're going to do just fine. At the Stanford's credit, I, you know, we've been talking about St. Joseph's defense. Stanford's cr- defense was their equal. I mean, it, you know, it was, it was basically a tie game, and, and Stanford's defense made a lot of plays. We talk about their offense a lot because they, they have uh, three or four players who can take it to the house on, on any play, and uh, Stanford's defense <laughs> played well enough to win. Uh, yeah, from Stanford's standpoint, uh, penalties really hurt them. Mm-hmm. Penalties on on first down that that put them uh, you know first fifteen first and twenty right off the bat, uh, you know if, if there's one thing Donnie's going to be upset about, it, it's going to be that's where you're hurting yourself penalties you, and, and they don't have the margin of error right now to and do something like that. But you know credit to Donnie also he came in and and basically you know had a team with thirty or forty players last year. And uh, he's way ahead of schedule in terms of the rebuild. The, this is about where I would have expected them to be a year from now, not not this year. Yeah, yeah. Donnie, you know, even when Donnie was at uh, Trinity, the, the teams were always very, very tough. The problem that he had at Trinity was he would roll out there with 30 kids on the roster. But those 30 kids left every single thing they had on the field every single time they played. Um, you know, Donnie, he's tremendous motivator. He is great, great with the inner city type kids. He loves those kids, you know, like they're his own. Um, you know, don't be shocked if Stanford, if, if Stanford's, they're going to be around for a while. Uh, I, I really, really believe that. Um, you yeah, know, get I, him, I just get have him, get that much now. faith in Get them now while you can. Because Absolutely. I, I agree. And, and, and that's, uh, that's been an untapped uh, source there because there have been a lot of kids walking the hallways who who should be out on the football field. And, yeah, absolutely. Donnie's, and Donnie's getting them out there now. So there, there's a lot of athletic talent at, at that school. And uh, you're going to see them uh, on Friday nights and Saturday afternoons. Absolutely. Well. Uh, we'll get to, we'll, we'll touch on St. Joseph's uh, opponent in, in the one bye week game next week. And that's New Canaan. And if there was an other, another game that sort of got built up, it was uh, Fairfield Ludlow and New Canaan. I have to be honest, if you at the beginning of the season, looking at the schedule, I never thought I'd be at Stanford and at Ludlow on the same weekend. Yeah. And, and actually a good thing because I, you know, when, when other teams are, are, are playing well and doing well, I like it. And, uh, Stanford, I mean, Ludlow got off to, to a 3-0 and start and had a really good win against Hamden. And they got a lot of press this weekend, and rightfully so. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the win over Hamden probably was a little bit, is a credit to, to the kind of team Ludlow is this year, but it was a little bit of fool's gold in terms of whether they were ready to, to compete with a team like New Canaan. Uh, and they didn't all of a sudden become a, a state championship contender with with that three and zero start, and and we saw that uh, in a, as much rain as as I can remember being in at uh, at a game. Uh, forty, it was forty three nothing. They stopped the game with under two minutes to go. I was never so happy to see a bolt of lightning in my <laughs> yeah. in my life. It's forty three nothing. You're you're going to have the running clock in the second half. And the coaches agreed to to end the game right there uh, mercifully for everybody. Uh, you know, I, I heard one or two people because, you know, we're a society that likes to be cruel. Ha, ha, ha. Look at Ludlow there. You know, they look look at them. You know what? Ludlow's three and one right now. And, and they've they've they're 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 that's a really good three and one. There's no shame losing to a new Canaan team that more and more is looking like last year's team with a really good defense and running attack that uh, is going to be playing for a state title. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody that's saying stuff about Lugo, there's half the teams in the league would trade place with them right now, if they could in a second. So the people saying stuff, they just need to um, pipe down and you know get, get a clue. Yeah. I, um, I, I, I don't get it. It's, you know, the, the, 
three and if, if if you told them you know to be three and one in your losses to New Canaan, you're you're having a good season. Right? Yeah, a real yeah. good season. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, the, the big thing with love, I know they got the bye week, but they have Ridgefield after that. I think that's a, that could be a testy one. You know that I think that's going to be the one to because you know, Ridgefield is down. You know, I know they have injuries. Maybe they'll be back hopefully by then. Um, you know, that's going to be a tough one. That's going to be a tough one. That'll be yeah. that'll be a, a measuring stick game yes. in terms of Ridgefield's winless, but they're you know they're they're Ridgefield. You want to say yeah, they're Ridgefield. Yeah. They're 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 one of the best winless teams, right? <laughs> not not the way Coach Kevin Callahan wants to have his his team described right now, right? Uh, but they've been decimated by by injuries and and and, and they've had a brutal schedule. You know, maybe they would be 0-4 right now, uh, even healthy. But if so, it would have been, a, you know, an 0-4 where they've been much more competitive than, than they've been able to. So, uh, right. you know, we'll, we'll, we'll know more about both of those teams, you know, is, is how, how will Ludlow do against the Ridgefield team? Right. That's, that's still uh, much better right. than their record. Yeah. And then, you know, the, uh, New Canaan's and New Canaan after that, I don't even want to say tough first game, tough first half of the first game. You know, they're, they've been rolling ever since then, um, you know, to put up 43 points in one half in a monsoon, you know, they're doing something right. You know, they, they always do. Um, but again, they have a, we talked about it a little bit, but they have a big one next week too. So um, the only game in the league. So it should be, should be a fun, interesting one. Um, but yeah, it, it the, the league's unfolding. I, 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 I'm I'm surprised. You know, Lud, Ludlow didn't really make. I don't know what happened behind the scenes, but to the best of my knowledge, Ludlow didn't really make an effort to postpone the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I know they're monitor monitoring things closely, but uh, the 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 elements played into New Canaan's strengths right now. But you know, if if this was the New Canaan team five years ago, you would love to play them in the rain. Yeah. But right now they, you know, first play of the game and, and you got a, a 70 yard touchdown run mm -hmm. and that, you know, right then and there, it, it was, you, you that's so deflating. You, you, yeah. Yeah. You come out of the locker room, you're excited, you're fired up, your coach gives you a speech, you're ready to go. And then boom. Oh man. <laughs> like, you, get, you get that, that first punch in. Uh, yeah. That that's, that's one of the worst, the worst things they could do this score an opening kickoff for the first play from scrimmage. It doesn't get much worse than that. So that's but. one of the that's one of the playmakers in the league who uh I don't know if I'd call him the most underrated player in the league, but Alex Benevento has yeah doesn't get talked about maybe as much as some of the other top players. And mm -hmm. I, I didn't check how many touchdowns he's had, but uh he got hurt in the first game last year and sat out the whole year. And and, and he's just a playmaker, he's tough to bring down, he's he's elusive. And he had three more touchdown runs. Uh, the The defense had had three interceptions and a fumble recovery in less than a half. Uh, you know, Chris Silvestri again has has uh, a defense where we don't really know the names of the individuals that well, mm -hmm. but but they're just playing at a high level. And uh, this this new look uh, new Canaan team they they've evolved and 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 played to their personnel sign and, and you can talk to this sign of a good coaching staff i i know coaches that that would have you know pl played uh you know three four out uh with this team because that's the way they always play and, and force fed this team into being the kind of team uh, it's, it's not really designed to be and and credit to to the new canaan coaches that uh you know they've they they've changed the mindset because that's what the strength of the team is yeah, and and you know, you you have to do that as a coach. You know, if you if you are always a uh, I hate the term pass happy, but your majority pass team, and you know you don't have the the tools to be a pass team, you you have to change. You know, and again, credit to Lou and his whole entire staff. You know, for real, I, I don't want to say real. I'm sure they knew it going in, but you know they have to do what they need to do. And you know, even though they were a pass team that. They always had their running sets in, you know, um, you know, it, I haven't seen them in person yet, but, you know, they, they're going to come out with the two tight end T set and, you know, they can run the ball, get the six, seven, pop a big one if they need to. Um, but yeah, you're not going to find many better. 
and it's not just Lou, it's the whole entire staff. You're not going to find much better staff than uh, you will in New Canaan. Um, you know, we, we, we just talked about St. Joe's in New Canaan, so we might as well look ahead. Uh, next weekend's the bye week, but uh, St. Joseph and, and New Canaan uh, have well, moved they, the te game. Te Technically, we have one more game this week. Yeah, so uh, right. I, I forgot Monday night Greenwich football. You're playing Monday night football. That's so, right. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I got my Giants on. You are you? We got our Giants on. So uh, Listen, I'll keep, I'll keep as, half an eye on on the score there. Yeah, right? as 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 much as I want to take the trip up Route Seven on a Monday night, I'm I'm gonna probably pass on that one and and uh, watch the Giants. Yeah. We don't have to talk about uh yeah, yeah. I actually I'm I'm friends with uh actually Sheila Mara was at the game yesterday, uh John John Mara's sister, because uh Ryan Ryan Durkin, her son, is the offensive coordinator uh for, for Stanford. So I, oh, nice. I I've known her well and, and I went over and, and talked with her, talked Giants football uh during nice. the half. But uh yeah, we're we're that that's the only team I live and die with in sports. So yeah. uh but won't be won't be making the the trip, but uh, you know I don't see how St. Joe's going to put many points up next week just against that defense and and yep. just with a freshman quarterback. The question I think to the game is the the key to the game is going to be can they can St. Joseph's defense contain New Canaan and and keep the game close and give them a chance to win. Yeah, I I think this is going to be one of those. Um game close at halftime you know one of those and then i could see new canaan slowly pulling when i say pulling away i'm not talking running clock or three touchdowns you know i'm talking like you know maybe up two scores late in the fourth quarter or something like that um you know like saint joe's is going to be there they're going to be tough they're going to be physical they're going to match them physically but like i just think new canaan's defense is going to put saint joe's offense in a bind and the St. Joe's, I don't think they're going to be able to sustain drives, um, you know, so they're going to have to hit a big play, pop something here or there. Um, if not, it, it might might be a long afternoon. Yeah. Uh, you know, if Alex Benavento goes 70 yards for a touchdown on the first play of the game again. Yeah. Uh, it, it's going to be tough. But St. Joe's always always plays New Canaan, New Canaan well. So that that's you, you want to go historically. Yeah. Uh, New Canaan's had a tough time in, in recent years with the cadets. So and, and, and again, we we got Joe Delavecchi on the other sideline. So at the yep. very least, he'll have a good game plan. Yes, absolutely. Well, what, what, what will happen? We'll see. Like I said, I, I saw them both uh, this weekend. I've seen New Canaan twice. Uh, it's it's I, I it's going to be a tough spot. I, I'd be a little surprised if if St. Joseph won the game. Uh, I'm I'm questioning how close it is, and mm -hmm. and and, and I, I know Joe Joe loves uh, bulletin board material. So Joe, that's about as close as I'm going to come to to saying anything that you can say. You know, look what Rudin said about us. Because yeah. uh, you know, to to their credit too, they're you know we kind of talked about Ludlow's three and one, St. Joseph's three and one too. So they're finding uh, they're finding ways to win also. Yeah, yeah, and you know Joe knows how I feel about him. Joe, nothing but love, buddy. You know that. <laughs> um, I just I just think it's tough with a freshman quarterback going against uh, a team like New Canaan. That's the only reason. Um, but yeah. It, it, we said this, uh, maybe I said this to you, maybe one, two, three, maybe, but in the first episode that we did that for some reason, I don't know why, like St. Joe's doesn't get talked about as the Greenwich's and New Canaan's dairy. And it's mind boggling to me because I think they're just as good uh, historically, if not better than some of those guys. But um, yeah, I Joe, them, I put them up in the same we, you absolutely. Know, I, I think people and St. Joe's been in the league. So, so long, I, I I don't know you know I I don't know but people are just used to saying New Canaan Greenwich uh, right that's Darien what I'm talking about because you like go back to the 1970s and 80s yeah. and 90s but I mean St. Joe's been in the league for like 30 years so yeah I, I agree I I I put them in and you know I always when I talk about the same the, the top teams they're they're certainly there the, yeah you know, they're they're at the top look they're at the banners the hanging in the gym absolutely exactly look at the banners look at the you know the 
look at everything they do, yeah. everything they do, you know? Um, yeah. But Joe, Joe will have the boys ready. I, I just think it's going to come down to uh, inexperience, you know, at key positions that's going to, that could possibly be the outcome of this game. Not a lot else to talk about this week. That's we, it. We can talk about Rowan Johnston, who who had a Rowan Johnston week, uh, rushed for 348 yards, uh, 47 yards in receptions. He had 30 touches, five touchdowns, and, and Trumbull beat Ridgefield 42-21 in, in a game that uh, in most years I would have been at. Yep. Uh, no, yeah. Number one, uh, I wanted to see Stanford. And number two, again, Ridgefield's just, you know, I they're they're beat up. I'm I'm really curious if they were fully healthy where they where they be right now. Right. I, I, my my instincts are their their defense was gonna have a tough time, but their offense would be much, much better. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe maybe that 42 21 is 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 a 42 35 game. And, and, and you know maybe they come out on the right side. I I don't know, but uh, it's just weird to see see Ridgefield going for right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, talk about places you don't want to play at. Ridgefield's one of them. So for Trumbull to do that at Tiger Hollow, um, you know that's that's even more impressive. You know, I always said even last year I thought the Johnson kid was one of the best the best kid in the league. Um, and um, I believe he got hurt at the end of the year last year or something, right? Did, yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. All, all played in the in the playoffs. He got hurt. In the yeah, playoffs. yeah. Um, so yeah, that that kid is special. That kid is special. You know, to put up those numbers, that's something. Those are video game numbers, as the kids say. We'll have to see. The big news in Ridgefield could be uh, his his Mars's daughter still the manager of the Ridgefield team after. Oh, and, uh, oh his man! Daughter's the manager. One of the managers. At Ridgefield, so uh, you know, was was did she keep her mouth shut at the dinner table? Yeah, did, did check her phone. Is there any pictures of uh, the special plays <laughs> on there? Any teams? Is there any yeah. other video <laughs> or uh, not that uh, Morris doesn't have access? But yeah, you know, the rest of, there, there's really nothing else to talk about in terms of all all the other games were were heavy favorites winning yeah. decisively. Uh, kind of a you know, kind of a blah week to, to you yeah. know, but 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 we have St. Joe's and and um, New Canaan, so uh, yeah. it's kind of everybody, you know, it, you got two two good powers, and uh, at least we'll have uh, a game. And uh, I don't know, I know, I know you got a busy schedule, and and I have the Alzheimer's walk next weekend, so next weekend maybe uh maybe our football discussion by week i may be looking for some uh some soccer and field hockey and volleyball players to yeah to i'll miss you with. Uh, I'll, I'll miss you too yeah. but i'll uh <laughs> i don't know i'll 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 text you during the giant game or something i think we have miami next week so uh yeah that'll be we'll 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 see where we are tomorrow tomorrow's Tomorrow's almost a must win week for the Giants. Yeah, we're we're close to that. We're close to that right now. I don't know. I know Andrew Thomas. Uh we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Sean, as always, I appreciate uh you coming on. And uh I think we we were able to give everybody a little bit of football talk on on a on a non exciting week. So thanks a lot for joining me. And uh We'll take a break and we'll be back with Maeve Matthews and Alexa Pino from the St. Joseph Girl Soccer Team. We're back and as promised, I decided to call this the Rudin Report podcast, not the football podcast, because I wanted to get to some other sports and uh, got a chance to see the St. Joseph girls soccer team this week in a big showdown against Fairfield Ludlow and both teams were, were unbeaten and, and the cadets just put on a show against a really good team and won for nothing. And joining me right now, we've got uh, the captain of the cadets, Maeve Matthews and the Gatorade state player of the year, Alexa Pino. Hey guys, how you doing? Hi, good. How are you? I'm, I'm doing great. Awesome. How are you? I'm doing all right. So uh, 
can you guys play any better than than you you did Tuesday night? I, if if you guys played like you you did Tuesday, I don't know any team that's going to beat you. Um, Maeve, you want to speak on that? I think I already answered that question the other night. <laughs> yeah, I think we've touched on it a little bit, but I think we played super well just as a team, like as we have been. I feel like um, I guess we've played about like five games now, and I just think that each game we've been progressing getting better each game and I think everything really came together uh that night and it was just great to watch my teammates play that well I think that's what you aim for I mean I think Jack said it best it's a long season you're you're gonna have a game or two where you're flat you're you're gonna have a game or two you don't know what's gonna happen but I I would imagine what you practice for ideally is to play like you did Tuesday night that that's what you want the end result to be yeah. And, you know, every team has their up, like ups and downs. Um, we have we've had our couple downs here and there, but it's not about the downs. It's about how you come back from those. And I think we've done a good job proving to other people and even more importantly, ourselves that we can come back from those. So and the result this week showed that. What, uh, how's this team compared to last year? And I'm not even just talking talent wise, also just the composition of the roster, you know, at St. Joseph, uh, Staples, a couple of other teams that you, you lose great players and you have new great players that, that come onto the scene. I mean, you're starting a, a freshman again this year. So What's how's this team similar to last year's that won a state and uh, FCI titles and and how's it different? Um, honestly, I think um. Oh, sorry, you go ahead. No, 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 you're good. You go. Okay, okay. Um, personally, I think last year we had a lot of good things about our teams or about our team, and we also had things we had to work on. And I think this year we can say that our team chemistry is by far off the charts. Um, the team bonding off and on the field is through the roof. And I think that's showing a lot this year. And we're all just super close. And there's not really like a gap, even though like in between grades with, because that, that stuff import, is an like important part of the game. And I think that is very much better this year. <laughs> Maybe. What do you what What do you think? You wanted to get in there before. No, yeah, I I really agree with what um Alexa said, and I just think that like we we had such a good team last year, and we did lose like some key players. We had um Hannah in the middle, we had Julia in the back, just like leading our team as captains too. But I think as much as we lost key players, we kept so many key players. Like our entire offensive line, we filled in, uh, in the middle and defense. So we're basically just like building up from last year, and I think that's like um, always something that's important when you just like keep building up from where you already were. So I feel like we almost like started at a little bit of an advantage this year because we had so many girls coming back and so many girls working hard and getting better and just like the new girls too. Everyone's just really adding what they need to add to the team. Maeve, I asked you this question the other night for people who didn't read my story, but <clears throat> When you guys are playing like that and you guys are so good at pressing the other team and, and forcing turnovers and uh, because of that, you sustain pressure. Maybe when you're playing like that, you get like half the night off. You're, you, get to, mm -hmm. you get to be like me and you get to watch the team. When, when the team's playing that well and, and, and you got players like, like Alexa doing what she does and, and Taylor Jenkins and, and Sarah Parker, what, what's it like when you just get to watch the team play? Yeah, I, I actually, it, like, it's hard for me because I love being able to do stuff and being able to be involved. But at the same time, I love to watch my team, like, do what they do. Even at practice, sometimes I'll say to myself or I'll say to, like, uh, Liv France and the other center back will be like, oh, my God, no way Pino just did that or no way so-and-so so just did that. Because I think sometimes, like, I'm just so impressed by their skills. I'll go home to my parents after a game and be like, I can't believe Sarah did that. I can't believe Pino pulled that rainbow on that girl. Like I, every single day I'm so impressed by my teammates. And I think I feel so lucky to be able to like be on a team with girls like so talented and it's just amazing to watch them do what they do. You mean <laughs> that was so sweet. <laughs> uh, Alexa, I, we talk about this in, 
you you've earned a lot of a, a lot of accolades and and you're the state player you win state player of the year as a as a sophomore and, and you you get the Gatorade highlight and you you've just gotten a lot of well deserved attention. Uh, what's what's this last year been like? You plus you got a little brother too, so you've had uh you've had a, a a lot of stuff happening in your life. What what's it been like? Yeah, it's definitely been a very eventful year, and especially with my little brother. Um, everything with like going on the trips for ECNL and then the recruiting like for college and then the commitment. My little brother was a part of all of that, and it made everything more interesting and fun. Um couple of times in the middle of the night I had to wake up because he was crying but only a couple so that's good um it's definitely been very busy this summer and I think as far as this season compared to last year I think there's a little bit more of a target on my back and I didn't realize that as much until we played Glastonbury actually when (laughs) <laughs> when I had one girl on my back, one girl to the right of me, and then a girl in front of me, and almost to the point they weren't even looking at the ball. And I was like, yeah. okay, so this is kind of how this year is going to be. But, you know, honestly, I think our team is doing a good job of handling that because we have so many other players who have just as much talent and can do just as many things on the ball and off the ball. Like, if they want to mark me, okay, Sarah Parker is on the left. She can have a field day with it every single time. Taylor Jenkins in the middle every single time. And then Julia Nunez, our whole offensive line is very, very competitive. And I don't think me being marked is necessarily the best game plan because of all the other players we have off the ball. It's kind of like pick your poison. You want to put two yeah. three players on there. You're going to have two other players that are open, and one hundred percent. You know they they score, and then they drop the two off of you, and and you get to do your thing. One hundred percent. Do you guys the the dynamic of the league has changed a lot this week? Uh, the Staples lost to to Walton yesterday, and and they're really injured. They they've got a a bunch of players out. Uh, Ridgefield's played three zero zero games in a in a row, three scoreless uh, draws. You know, you 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 beat Ludlow pretty decisively, and and they have a lot of talent. Uh, and, and I'm sure uh, nobody's writing them off. But do you guys pay a lot of attention to what to what other teams are doing? I I know uh, I know Jack, and I want to get to second uh, Nagari. Your coach doesn't really scout other teams, but do you pay attention to what other teams are doing? yeah well I think like it's kind of special with our team we don't like even at practice and with Jack like as you mentioned I know you're going to get more into him later but we don't really focus on what other teams are doing I think like that's what's special about our team is just we focus on what we need to do individually what we need to do as a team and to get better and I think the FCAC as like a whole it's just a really competitive league so it is nice to follow it and like see like you can't really ever expect a score you can't call a game before and say oh this person's going to win because I think it's so competitive and there's always things can go either way like a team can have such a good game and it's just gonna go out in their favor in that game and um Jack always tells us the season's so long there's injuries like you said Staples getting injured so I think you can't really say so and so's gonna win because things change weekly daily even so yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of uh, – is that strange for you? Uh, you? You look around and uh, a, team like, a team like Ridgefield, they haven't been scoring, but they haven't been conceding. Uh, you know, Staples has some more offensive players. They're all, they're all so different. Is that kind of strange, not really knowing what to expect? Or I, I, I think it just seems like Jack feels if – if you guys play the way you can play, nobody can beat you. Um, I think personally, as far as like checking the scores of the other games, I mean, sometimes it's good to like get to know like, okay, as far as how competitive one of the other games, like if you're going to play one of the two teams, you kind of want to see like, okay, 
this team beat this team, but you're not going and like checking to see how they play and do this change so we can change the way that we play because that's not going to happen for us. Like never will you hear Jack saying like, oh, Staples lost by this many goals or this many goals. It's just like, okay, you need to get your stuff together. You need to be on your game. It's the mentality and it's just our key points before every game. And I think that's ultimately why we end up getting the results that we get and hopefully continue to get throughout the season. Yeah, just like the last three or four years, it's been you Staples and Ridgefield at the top and, uh, you know, you're battling for the top seed. I, I didn't know, like, the last few years when it gets late <laughs> in the season, are, are you guys like, you know, we want to be the first seed? What what did Ridgefield do? What did Staples do? I, I didn't know if you, you paid close attention to, to it for that reason. Yeah, and honestly, if you, you're you seeing Ridgefield tying those games and it's a 0-0 zero, zero draw every time, you're like, okay, so are they playing for a tie? Are they trying to maybe get one quick one? Kind of, You kind of have to think about that a little bit because may, they're pro- that sounds like they're a very defensive-minded team, and that's something we have to think about because I think our team is both offensive and defensively impactful in the game. So that's something other teams have to think about as well. You guys are both uh, going on to play uh, high level college ball. Maybe you got your Rhode Island uh, hoodie on there. And, and Alexa, it looks like I know in the colors, that's probably soft. Yeah, there. I, yeah. I thought that was, uh, I actually uh, have it downstairs. I actually have a, a, a Carolina t shirt. I, I have one of the Cox t shirts that uh, <laughs> it, it, I brought it downstairs. But, uh, what made you each decide on the school you did? Maybe I about Rhode Island. What brought you there? Yeah, so I um, it was obviously a long process. Alexa could agree with me. I think the recruiting process for everyone is just stressful and long. But um, in the summer, well, I had been talking to them in the spring, like into the summer. Just I had been going to a lot of tournaments and showcases, and as everyone does. And uh, I think it really came down to like. I really want to be a physical therapist. I know I mentioned that to you. So they have a really strong program. I know girls who've went through it and that really matters to me. Like not obviously soccer is so important to me, but I think uh, I have to like look ahead into the future and uh, what I'm going to be doing after those four years. So that really mattered to me. And then the coaching staff and I went on a visit and like was talking with the girls and uh, I just think like seeing what the atmosphere is like and what the girls are like, like that also mattered to me. So I'm just super excited to go there and continue my studies and soccer. And it's just like a huge opportunity. I'm so grateful for it. Alexa, you, you, you spent August going to a lot of schools. Uh, what led you to uh, South Carolina? Well, so I actually, I attended a camp before they could actually speak to me on June 15th. I attended a camp in February. And at that time, it was a little chilly there. It's down south. And it's not always that cold. I think it was about 40 degrees, maybe, maybe even more than that. But that didn't bother me because it was down south. It wasn't like how it normally was going to be during season, like how it is there right now. Um, And that's something that the coaches say, like usually when you're visiting a place, you want to go on the worst day. So so you want to make sure you love it, even when it's not the best ideal time I should say and that's kind of when I went it we did a campus tour I thought it was beautiful as and the other schools that I visited also had beautiful campuses but I think this was one that really stuck out to me and not only just that but the family environment that I got the impression of from not just the players but the coaches too and even now like I'm already feeling support like just being new to the program and I'm not there yet, but I'm already kind of being like trying to get prepared as I'm going. I'm already like, I'm in touch with the athletic trainer there trying to see what I can do to prepare myself. And it's just, it's good that they offer all of these resources for me and for all the players. So I'm trying to utilize those as best as I can. All right. I got to ask, uh, you may have the only coach in the FCAC that I, I actually keep my video camera on because I figure if there's any coach I could ever get a TikTok out of that would be that would maybe go viral, 
it would be Jack. He's uh he's a little bit of a wild man, I guess, on the sideline. I, I call him the the excitable boy from from a song uh by by an artist you probably don't know. But or when, when when he's going wild like that on the sideline, can you hear him and are are you cognizant of, of it? So it depends, like during celebration or like the whole game. I mean, he's you game. know He's cheering, you know, if you guys, if you guys have a good attack and a near miss, he's, he's clapping it up and yelling, uh, you know, he's shouting instructions. He just, he gets caught up in the game pretty, pretty, he's pretty emotional uh, and doesn't, doesn't hide it. Are, are you, uh, I, I'm just curious when you're playing, if you, if you can kind of like hear him. So, so I can say for me, yes, I can hear him, but, and it's not a bad thing that I can. I honestly think it's very motivating. And I know deep down he is our biggest supporter and he will do anything for that team and for our team. So I appreciate that from him. And I know it's hard if you're not a part of that team environment, like it's hard seeing that and being like, Oh, wow. (laughs) Hmm. But honestly, our team wouldn't be the same without him. So I wouldn't change a thing. What about me or you? I, I, I'm just asking that because there's anything wrong with it. It's just not what you're accustomed to usually hearing. You know, he's he's as vocal as, as there is. I was just kind of curious when you're playing, if you're aware of it. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be hard. If, I mean, it would be – you'd be lying if you say you didn't hear him because he's probably the loudest coach and the most excited. But I think that's why we all love him because of how much passion he has for our team and just for the game of soccer. I mean, even at practice, well, he'll crack a joke and we're all chuckle. And in school, hear him yelling our names down the hallways or yelling <laughs> Ole or New York Soccer Club. I think that's the best part of Jack is what he brings to our team and just like honestly the joy he brings to our team because it's just so funny to see what he does and how much he really cares about our team and how much he's going to put into this team. It's amazing. You kind of set up my next question here. Uh, I asked him, you know, the other uh, Tuesday night, he, he's yelling for Olay. He's yelling for, you know, New York <clears throat> Sports Club. Uh, I, I, I can't remember a couple of the other nicknames. You two didn't have any nicknames. What's what what's up with that? I honestly don't know. <laughs> I mean, he calls Pino, me- Pino just sounds good. Pino almost sounds like a nickname. It's got like a nice ring to it. Maybe... Uh, it's- yeah, that's kind of just what I go by. Like, like even in school, I think 90% of everybody in school, like even teachers will call me Pino. Really? <laughs> yeah, because that's kind of how I introduce myself. Really? And if, if yeah, it, it's like, it's odd. I don't know. But for Maeve, I'm not really sure. And yeah, Maeve, what's, what's up? You're captain of the team. You should, you should have a nickname. I know. Ever since I started, I just never had a nickname. And then, like, as the years went on, these girls would come and they'd get nicknames so that I was still just Maeve. But I feel like my name's unique enough in itself that it doesn't really need a nickname. But um, it's funny to see the other ones the girls get. And as girls come on the team, like freshmen, they'll just be called a nickname and they won't say anything about it. They'll just, like, let them call her that and whatever. So I think it's funny to see how things change over the years and what girls get what names. Yeah. And there's been a new development with Jenna's nickname. Her name is um, Buttercup. <laughs> Buttercup? Where did Buttercup come from? I honestly, no one knows. <laughs> nobody knows. It just I happened. Know. I don't know if Jack has any for sports writers, and if so, I don't know. I don't want to know what he calls me behind my back or anything. <laughs> so uh, I, don't, I don't think we've heard of one so far, but if we do, we'll let you know bald guy or something like that i don't know (laughs) well guys and one reason i also another reason i want to have you on i alex i i told you told you this but i jeff jacobs write a story on you about two weeks ago and he did it because i i've gotten to know you pretty well and i wanted a different perspective and he called me after and he said you know she's one of like the three best high school athletes I've ever interviewed. And I said, yeah, I do know that. And uh, I, I wanted everybody who's read about you to, to get to hear you. And, and Maeve, I interviewed you uh, for the first time Tuesday night and uh, you're, you're right up there in, in the good insight and quotes department. Everybody got to see it now. So uh, it's, it's fun covering you guys. It's fun talking to you. So 
thanks a lot for taking the time here and uh, best of luck the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. And that's the Rudin Report podcast for this week. I want to thank Sean Ireland. I want to thank uh, Maeve Matthews and Alexa Pino. And I want to thank Cooper Boardman for the sound editing. We have a football bye week, except for uh, St. Joseph New Canaan next week. So we'll be all up, be all over that. Until then, have a good week.